Hello everyone, Mr. Changer here, your Neighborhood Planetarium Director, with the June 2020 edition of Evening Sky Excursions, where I show you what's up in the sky this month. Although Memorial Day weekend, the unofficial start of summer, is behind us, June brings the summer solstice, which is the official astronomical start of summer, on June 20th. This is the date when the northern hemisphere of the Earth is tilted at its steepest angle towards the sun and causes us to have the longest day of the year. On the 20th, the official daytime, which is from sunrise to sunset, is about 15 hours, 1 minute, and 43 seconds. Because of twilight, which is the light we see in the sky due to the refraction and reflection of sunlight from below the horizon before sunrise and after sunset, we really have a little more than 17 hours of light in the sky. This is great for students who have completed their unusual school year and need to be outside and active, but it's not very great for us stargazers. Six hours of true darkness starting after 10 p.m., unstable warm air that makes everything in the sky seem to twinkle and wiggle, humidity that fogs up telescope mirrors and lenses, and the return of bugs all make this time of year difficult for those of us who enjoy viewing the night sky through telescopes. However, the warm temperatures and ability to stay out late into the night makes it the perfect time to just be outside and enjoy the wonders overhead. When the short nights and less than optimal viewing make me less likely to take out my telescopes and point them at those faint fuzzy natural wonders overhead, I like to change my focus to the human-made wonders that can be seen in the night sky. Satellites. Satellites can range in size from a loaf of bread to the International Space Station, which is the size of a football field. These objects orbit anywhere from 100 miles above our heads, which is just on the edge of our atmosphere, to more than 22,000 miles to reach what we call geosynchronous orbit. You can see many of the satellites that orbit close to the Earth in the 100 to 400 mile range without a telescope or binoculars. You just need some patience and to know what to look for. Let's start by looking for the International Space Station, which is a hot topic now since Saturday, May 30th's historic launch of two NASA astronauts, Bob Behnken and Doug Hurley, from U.S. soil to the International Space Station for the first time since 2011 aboard a SpaceX rocket in the SpaceX Dragon Crew capsule. Here we are on June 1st, and we can see that it really doesn't get close to dark until about 9.30 p.m. Even now, you can still see some twilight in the northwest. By this time, you should be able to find the Big Dipper high over your head. We're going to use the Big Dipper to find some objects later on in the night sky, but now it can be used to help us find where to look for the International Space Station passing overhead on Monday, June 1st. The Big Dipper appears to be almost straight up and down, pouring its contents down on the ground. If you imagine water in the Big Dipper, where it would pour out onto the ground is the northwest, which is where we want to watch for the appearance of the International Space Station here on June 1st. Just after 9.50, p.m. in this direction, you should see what appears to be a bright star rising from the horizon. I will play time as it, at its normal rate here to show you about how fast it will appear to move across the sky. In reality, it's orbiting the Earth at more than 17,000 miles per hour. The International Space Station and other visible satellites appear to move through the sky like very high-flying airplanes. Except these will not have any blinking or colored lights on them like airplanes. They can even get brighter or dimmer as they pass over. Visible passes of the International Space Station like this can last from under a minute to up to seven minutes, depending on where the International Space Station is positioned in its orbit relative to the Earth and Sun. This pass will last until just before 9.56, when it will disappear from the middle of the sky. Now, don't worry, the International Space Station is still there and everyone is safe. The reason for this apparent disappearance has to do with 
why we're able to see the International Space Station and other satellites in our skies. These objects do not have lights on them shining down, like airplanes do. The light we see from these satellites is reflected sunlight from either the metal surfaces of these objects or their solar panels. Since the International Space Station and other satellites are so high up, 100 to 400 miles for these visible ones, they are still in sunlight. Where they are in space, the sun is still shining on them, and some of that light gets reflected back down to us. Once they go into the Earth's shadow, or the sun sets for them, there is no more light to reflect, and they seem to just disappear from the middle of the sky. Some objects can even appear to change back and forth between dim and bright, dim and bright, as they cross the sky. This can happen when a satellite is spinning and its solar panels reflect more and less light down to us. Remember, this pass overhead is Monday, June 1st. There should be multiple opportunities to see the International Space Station in our evening sky in the month of June. To always know when the International Space Station is overhead, you can check out NASA's Spot the Station app at spotthestation.nasa.gov. As for other satellites, there are various websites and phone apps to help track the hundreds that are possible to see in almost every direction. But if you just go outside at night and sit back on a blanket or chair, stare up and have some patience you're bound to see some. Even if the International Space Station isn't passing overhead, you can wait until the sky is really dark, around 10 o'clock, and look at this month's constellations. We're still in some of the dimmer and less obvious constellations of the spring sky until next month when the summer triangle and some planets will be more prominent in the evening sky. But this is a good chance to practice your observation skills and imagination. We're going to start high overhead with the Big Dipper and go find some constellations again this month. Last month we imagined water dripping onto the back of Leo the Lion with his backwards question mark shaped mane and front paws and he's still high in the sky. We also used the handle of the Big Dipper which is an arc shape to arc to Arcturus, one of the brightest stars in the sky right now. Arcturus marks the bottom of the ice cream cone-shaped constellation of Bootes the Herdsman, high up in the sky, almost overhead. When facing Arcturus in the east, the ice cream cone appears to be on its side to the left or east of Arcturus. Just below the ice cream cone shape of Bootes, you may be able to just make out six stars that look like a smiley face or backwards C shape. This is the constellation Corona Borealis, the Northern Crown. And just below the Northern Crown, you may be able to find the greatest of all Greek heroes, Hercules. Most of the stars that form the constellation of Hercules are faint. His most distinguishing feature is the shape that makes up his main body, which we call the keystone. This trapezoid shape is called the keystone because of its resemblance to the shape of the stone found at the top of an arch, known as the keystone. Also, the shape of our state symbol, the keystone. Pennsylvania is known as the keystone state because we were the middle of the arch of original colonies. If you can find the keystone shape, that makes up Hercules' body, and you want to do some deep sky searching, pull out some binoculars and look along the highest line in that shape. Just along here, you may be able to spot the Great Hercules Cluster of Stars, known on astronomical charts as M13 or Messier 13. In a pair of binoculars, this will appear as a very faint but noticeable fuzzy spot. This globular cluster of stars is more than 22,000 light years from Earth and contains tens of thousands of stars. That little smudge is 145 light years across. Just below Hercules is the brightest star of our summer sky, Vega, 
which is one of the corners of the summer triangle that we will start observing next month. Now, if you're a night owl or out late after a small graduation party around midnight or one o'clock, you may notice the super bright planet Jupiter and the slightly dimmer planet Saturn slowly making their way into our evening sky in the east. We'll talk more about these planets next month too, as they appear earlier in the evening sky. This month, go out, enjoy the warm weather, stare up at the sky, watch for the International Space Station and any of the other hundreds of human satellites quietly marching amongst the stars, be amazed, and as always, most importantly, be excellent to each other.